Ah, okay, good. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this ML101, which is computer vision. Like I say, computer vision is probably the most mature of machine learning projects. And this one here, there are various uh, common training things that people use. And here's one of them. This thing is called the Fashion MNIST dataset. And it's just a bunch of images of clothing, like you can see here. And the clothing is sorted into 10 categories and it's labeled. So you can train your machine learning model to label it correctly. And here are the labels, t-shirt, trouser, pullover, dress, coat, sandal, and so on. Just uh, clothing items. Now, each image is a 28 by 28 pixel grayscale image. So each image has 28 times 28, which is 784 values. And each value goes from 0 to 255, which is the brightness of that pixel. So that's, um, that's the input, is 784 pixels. And then it's going to pass it through layers of neural processing to uh, set it down. And so let me show you a diagram here. So here's what we're going to have. The input image, 28 by 28 pixels. Then we're just going to line up each pixel as an independent input and process it through a layer of hidden neurons and then sort it into 10 output categories, of which you see three here, which will be the probability that it's a coat, a sneaker, a bag, or those other clothing items. So that's the game. One thing to notice here, which is real important, is that it does not work the way the human eye works at all. You know, a human eye looking at this, you would see a big region of black up here, which you ignore, that's not interesting. Then you see the edge of a garment here, and you'd first find this curvy shape to the edge, and you would not process the pixels independently, as if each pixel is a totally independent piece of data not connected to the pixel next to it. Instead, you would first pre-process it to find interesting information like the edges and shapes, and then process those. And in fact, there are some new machine vision models that do that. They have a pre-processing layer that does things like detect more abstract concepts like an edge, and then feed that in as data. And as you can imagine, that data is far more useful than just the brightness of one pixel. So just from the way you've fed in the data, you've already sort of made your uh, learning model overlook important things. It's just going to treat each pixel as an independent bit of information. And if it would have to figure out what an edge is some other way. So anyway, this is how we're going to do it, the simplest way to write the model. So let's run that. And that'll go here in my uh, Google Colab. So this is going to import the data, and it's going to split it into two categories, training and test. This is important. When you have a, a bunch of labeled data, you don't just use all of it to train your model because um, you don't know if it's learning the trend or if it's fitting the noise. So you take something like 80% of the data, and you train it on that, and then you test it by feeding it 20% more images it's never seen before to see how accurate it is on that. That's the right test. Otherwise, you might be learning specific idiosyncrasies of your training data, which are not really representative of the class. And here's the model. We start with a 28 by 28 pixel input. Then we have this is the input layer, the input raw pixels. Then we have one hidden layer with 128 neurons to do the processing. And then we have 10 output neurons to indicate uh, which one of the 10 categories it fits in. And so we're going to run this one. It's going to do only five epochs of training. And each epoch is going to involve a whole lot more calculation. So whereas for the simple one before, we had uh, 500 epochs. Here, we're going to have less epochs that take longer. So it's been running for 11 seconds already. Won't take too long, but there, here it goes. Now it's downloading the data from some Google storage. There, here's the first epoch training. And as you can see, it's taking something like 17 seconds to do one training step. All right, and there's the epoch two, so it won't be too long. It'll be about another minute to finish. And we can see the results here. There's loss and accuracy. So loss is the error. You see the first one is 0.49, next one is 0.37. So it, the loss is going down. Next one looks like it's going to be 0.34. 
and the accuracy is the percentage of images it correctly labeled, and that's going up, 82, 86, 87. Eighty-eight percent right. All right. All right. After five epochs, it's eighty-nine percent right. Okay. Um. All right. It's a little better than when I did it here. I only got up to eighty-seven, but I it, there's some randomness in the process. So now we're going to view the results for the first twenty images and see if we can understand why it's getting some of them wrong. It's still getting about 10% of them wrong. So this is going to print the results for the first 10 images. And what the first number is the right answer. And then you have columns 0 through 9, which are probabilities. And in this case, the right answer is 9 for the first image and has a 93% chance of being a 9. So that's OK. This one, 2 is right. These 1s are right. Uh, this one, six, it had a harder time with, but it had an 83% chance of being six. Uh, I was just looking for one it got wrong. And this looks like one it got wrong. This is zero, column zero, one, two, three, four, five. It has an 87% chance of being a five, but it's really a seven. So this one it got wrong. It'd be interesting to look at that one. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. It looks like that is image 12. So image 12, it got wrong, and it's random which ones it's going to get wrong. So let's view image 12 and also when it got right and see if we can understand why it didn't classify them correctly. So I'm going to do image 12 here instead of the image 11, which is the one that got wrong when I did it before. So I'll image 0, which it got right, and image 12, which it got wrong, we're going to look at those images. OK, this is an image it got right. OK, this is an image it got wrong. And it couldn't tell whether it was a 5 or a 7. Let's go up and look at what 5 and 7 are. 5 is a sandal, and 7 is a sneaker. So I can understand that. It can't tell whether this is a sandal or a sneaker from this amount of data. And that seems like a, a, a confusion that a human would have, too, understanding. So that's not too surprising. All right. Now we can try training it for more epochs. So let's go back up to the training here. And instead of training it for just five epochs, well, I'm not going to, we can train it on 25 epochs. Now, if you do that, I'm not going to bother doing it live. It will go up to 94% accuracy on the training set. But on the test set, it's just 88% accurate. So this is the point. This is what's called overfitting and the overtraining. This is going to happen. And you, if you train a model too much, it will find not only the trend, but also the noise. It will start picking up idiosyncrasies of training data, which are not reflective of the class. And you don't want to do that. This is a problem with large language models. Um, when large language models came out like ChatGPT, they, people have found out that they just trained it on vast amounts of data from the internet without getting permission or paying royalties. And so authors wondered, did they train it on my book? So they would put in like a paragraph or two from the book and then find that it would repeat whole pages of the book. Exactly. So they had not only trained it on copyrighted books, they had overtrained it on copyrighted books. So it had basically memorized those exact pages and could repeat them back. And this is going to be important with the New York Times lawsuit. The New York Times is suing uh, OpenAI for training their data on all the publicly available New York Times articles. And um, the court may well end up deciding on some kind of technicality. But the essence of the argument is, are you learning like a human would learn from reading those articles? Because that's what we intended them for, which means you're not memorizing every article word for word. You're just learning the basic meaning of it. But if you're overtraining, then you are memorizing every article. And then when people ask for it, you're just going to be handing out exact duplicates of those articles in violation of copyright. Anyway, um, so uh, there's one computer vision project. And I'll demonstrate a couple others. Let me stop this recording.